Okay, so let's start. Thank you for coming. Welcome, everybody. And I want, in this session, I want to start by making you remember something from your past. Uh, try to remember the first time that you had to debug an event driven system. Uh, do you remember it? Do you remember how did it went? Do you remember what did you try to do? Or how any previous experience debugging any kind of other type of systems it may have influenced your first approach. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share with you my first experience trying to debug an event-driven system and what I also tried to do. And the whole idea of this session is to share with you some learnings that I had from, from that moment and also, I will be open to maybe later on on the networking. We could, I could also learn what's which was your your approach and what did you learn from this. And my first uh, my first time trying to debug an event driven system was for a big corporate. I'm not going to say any any names, but let's say that it was a very big company. Uh, we were a bunch of different teams working on different pieces. And my team was working uh, for a piece that was basically getting some notifications or some messages from uh, some message broker. And we were processing that, those. We were making some changes in the state of our uh, systems. And we were notifying some other events back putting those events back into the message broker so that any other component could react to the changes that we had just made. With that definition, maybe I realized that maybe uh, other teams will fit uh, into that definition because that's what we do in an event distributed event-driven uh, system. We basically get information from some kind of message broker and we process them and we put back some messages back into the message broker to notify uh, who else is interested in those changes. But in this case, um, let's say that someone approached us and said, hey, your component is not processing certain types of messages because either we are not seeing the, change, the changes that we should be seeing in the, in the application or we are not getting the notifications that should be the result of you processing those kind of messages. So the lucky, luckily for us, we had identified the type of messages that were not being processed in the way that they should. So we set up a test environment. We prepared some sample messages of the type of the type that were causing the problems, and we were ready to to try. And in these moments. When, I, when I'm going to try or to try to debug a system like this, I feel like in one of those movies in which uh, the bad guy enters a car and runs away with some briefcase or some package and the good guy or the good girl just steps into the street and stops a taxi or in our case, the debugger and tries to chase the bad guy because following the bad guy will be, she or he will be able to track down what happens to that information. So you start step into the, into the car, into the taxi, or you start the, the debugger and say, hey, follow that car or follow that message. And you, uh, the chase start, and the interesting and exciting part of the movie start because you are uh, hitting those function keys to extract the debugger to, follow that way to uh, go uh, and check what has the code done in, in each of the steps. And at some point you see that the message hits a bridge and crosses that bridge. bridge. And that bridge in our code has the form or of something like message goes dot send. So, you step in that line of code or you step over and at the other side of the bridge, you see nothing. Your thread has 
finish working because he has delivered message. The message is somewhere else and you don't have no idea where your message is being processed. Maybe another thread pick up the message and has continued processing the message. So you can tr you cannot track uh, where the problem is. Or maybe some other machine, because the bridge was a very big bridge and is uh, the message has been handed to a component that is running somewhere else. So in this case, what I did, I don't know what you, you did, is you start scratching your head and you try to figure out which other points in your code could be handing this message from the other side of the grid, from the other side of the message bus. And you start sometimes randomly putting breakpoints in other components. Basically, this is an approach that is the first approach that we all have when we start debugging the first type of systems that we have. When we face uh, a system built with a linear or procedural programming, when we are uh, at the university or we are having our classes, basically we think of the code like something linear that we could follow step by step and we will get to the point in which anything is done. In this case, we usually rely on some traces and logs to follow the message or to follow the code. And we have three strategies for debugging systems like this. Very simple. The first one is simple recognition. This basically means that we are going to rely on our previous experience, maybe for the season developers. It's, it's useful because you sometimes, based on the problems, you may identify which are the potential problems, the more the usual suspect in your code that will that will probably be causing the, the problem. But if you don't know the, the code base, usually the more usual strategy is forward looking, which means let's go through the code, let's pick the, the code and let's follow line by line this code. This is very useful when we don't really know the code base, we, when we are facing a new code base. If we already know the code base, because it's a project that we have been uh, in for, for several time, uh, for some time, another strategy that we may use is backward looking, which basically means that we are going to match the traces and logs with the code in order to reconstruct what happened in our code and to find and identify the potential problem. But this, basically, this is the most simple programming paradigm that we always start uh, learning. But there are another program paradigms like structure and object-oriented programming, which basically means that on top of the linear programming, uh, basically these are the concept of different components trying to collaborate and to rely on some uh, messages so that they could together work and solve a problem. In this case, the main difference is that we have different components that are collaborating. And for that, uh, it's very useful to have a debugger like the taxi that we were using to follow the different calls and to, to follow the code among the different components that are involved in solving a problem. So with the debugger, we could set up some breakpoints or conditional breakpoints, but the main new tool or new strategy that we have here is that we usually start or we add these kind of diagrams, class diagrams or collaboration diagram, diagrams in which we get a big picture of how our component, our application is working. That after the object-oriented programming paradigm, we have these event-based systems. The first time that I faced an event even based system was uh, indeed a graphical user uh, interface program in which basically we have two main parts in our application. One which is going to deal with any kind of user interaction and another one which will take care of actually processing and computing 
any kind of task that the user requests through the interface. The main new component that is introduced here is that while one side of my application is take, taking care of what the user is doing, he's clicking a button or he's moving uh, the mouse on our interface, another one will take care of the execution. And for that, the first part of the application will generate an event that will be put in some kind of communication mechanism. It could be a queue or it could be some kind of message broker. And the event is put there and the other part, the other side of our application will pick that event from there. So the main concept here is that we are introducing that bridge that we have seen before that actually makes more difficult to try to track down the execution flow of our code because there's a level of indirection in that message broker or that queue or that communication mechanism. So things start to get more complex. That even worse, nowadays we have distributed even based systems, which means that now we have not two, but several different components running not in the same machine, but in several different machines. So actually what we are doing here is we are adding the networking problems and the distance problems to our systems. So we now have some communication mechanisms, but these communication mechanisms are much more complex because now we have infrastructure, we have to take into account problems that could be result of the networking or problems that could be result of how the different components are getting the input and output of or the networking from this communication. So why is it so difficult to debug distributed event-based systems? Basically, because the first thing that we need to keep in mind is that actually coding and debugging are two different activities. And that means that they require different skill sets. So we as developers, we need to take care not only of our coding skills, but also we need to practice and train our debugging skills. And there are some studies that suggest that there are some cultural backgrounds that may put us in a better or worse position to debug uh, systems. But also we have to take into, into account the different levels of complexity of the systems that we are going to debug. The first level of complexity is that of the systems that we were describing uh, somehow in our first example, the non-concurrent monolithic systems, which basically means that we can more or less follow the flow execution from the beginning to the end without having to worry about any other component running at the same time. So in this case, we probably will be able to find the bug or the problem by just simply following our code in a concrete and simple example. But sometimes when you have different components working at the same time, you also have the concurrency level, which means that the, maybe the bug is not in the code per se, because the code is correct, but the problem is coming from the order in which two different components are executing the same code or related code uh, at the same time. And that way, because they will be probably fighting for resources, they will probably influencing themselves, or maybe they are uh, corrupting some data or something like that. And there is a third level on, of, of uh, complexity, which is the distributed problem. And this is where things get more and more interesting. First, before I was, uh, I was mentioning that there are some skill sets that is, are important to practice. And one of them is the interdependence. The interdependence, interdependence basically is the ability that we as humans have to understand a system as a whole or to understand the system by knowing, by 
uh, in fact, knowing that they are a sum of several different components and some and how they relate to to each other. So in that in that case, when we are debugging a distributed system, basically having the ability to focus on the different components and how they interact with their environment with other components is actually a skill that is very important to have uh, in order to debug and to understand where the problem could be. Because those systems as a whole are so big and so complex that we will probably, we won't be able to understand them as a whole. Then there's another thing that we need to keep in mind is that whenever a message crosses crosses that bridge, maybe at the other side of the bridge is not just one, but several different components who are going to handle that message. So we may end up with several different uh, copies of our message being processed in several different components. So in this point, again, it's very important to understand how many components could be tracking or who could be dealing with our message and try to focus on one of them at a time. Because that way we will be able to narrow our contest and understand what a component is doing while at the same time having in mind that we are not the only ones processing that message. Again, trying to follow that, uh, that message and having ending up with several different copies will just make it impossible to use the follow that message strategy from the very beginning using a debugger. And also, as I mentioned before, we have the problems of distributed systems, which means that we need to take into account the whole OSI stack model and all the problems that come with uh, distributed systems like uh, latency problems or the routes that the different systems have to reach to each other or the time that it takes or the problems of infrastructure and these kind of things. And last but not least, we have also in these times of cloud computing, we have also these elastic and ephem ephemeral components, which means that maybe the component that actually uh, processes a message and that created a problem is not running anymore because sometimes our systems are elastic. So some components are created when we have a high workload, but the component that we uh, want to track maybe is not running anymore because the workload was uh, lower at some point and that component was discarded. So if we rely on local traces or logs, we may find ourselves in the situation of trying to reach out to some logs that they may not exist anymore. So with all this in mind, some of the learnings that I had was uh, to have a more complete approach when we are trying to prepare for debugging this kind of systems. And this, means that we need to think about how we are going to debug our system right away from the very beginning when we are coding, but also when we are deploying, and of course, when we are facing the problem or when we are chasing the problem. First, when we are, co when we are coding our system, the main thing that we need to keep in mind is that we need to try to make our system observable. That means that we should not only register some traces and logs, but also taking into account that we are working with a distributed system, we should probably be interested in registering all the events that affect the life cycle of the application, like a new component registering to the message broker or a new component being uh, sat down or a new com a component uh, triggering a notification or receiving a notification and processing that uh, and that kind of events. Not only the events that we are getting from from our business point of view, but also events 
on the life cycle of our applications. Also, from the point of view of the events that are related to our business application, to the, our business point of view, what we need to think is on some kind of correlation ID that will allow us to track down all the messages involved in the very same transaction. So maybe we need to start adding some kind of unique IDs that will be posed somehow to all the messages that are involved in certain transaction so that the later on we will be able to track all the events related to a certain transaction to know what happened. And there are some systems that, uh, for example, if we are going to use uh, a library or a framework, there are some frameworks that are that have extensions that are compliant with open tracing or open telemetry specs or with some other kind of systems that make your system observable. So pay attention whenever you are going to use a framework to those kind of characteristics of the, of the library or framework that you are using. Because if you do so, you will be more prepared to make your system observable. Because later on, while you are at runtime or when you are deploying your system, you will probably will want to have some kind of centralized dashboards in which these other tools will be able to query your system, your different components in order to get information and to add that information to, that, to those dashboards and metrics. So that at runtime, you will be able to keep track of how the different messages are going to cross your system and to track down from a higher point of view, which is the different paths and the different compo components that are dealing and processing your events. And of course, there's also another nice uh, tool or another, another nice thing to keep in mind is, of course, make sure that you are using clocks that are in sync or you are using the same uh, time uh, time stamps in all your events because that way it would be easier to uh, to show or to relate the ordering in which the events were processed in different components. So there are several different tools to collect and visualize those centralized logs. But again, if you have uh, any specific message broker or any specific infrastructure tooling. Uh, also pay attention on how they allow you to query about the messages and the, uh, the metrics that they have. And finally, at the banding time, if you have done the, if you have followed these advices in the previous steps, you will be able to start with a big picture of how your system is working and try to identify which are the potential places in which your message is not being processed or is being lost or something where is happening. So once that you identify the potential place in which you have a problem, you are narrowing actually the problem to a certain component and you will be able to track down what is happening in that specific component. And in that case, please, Try to focus on one component at a time. Try to identify, once that you have identified that there's a problem in certain uh, point of code, try to replicate the problem in that, in that uh, side. But I will also want to introduce something new, probably, in this case. If you are using an event-driven architecture, maybe it's worth to go a step further and try to use to consider how event sourcing may help in all these stages. Because event sourcing is not just some event driven. Event sourcing means, means that you are going to, um, you are going to not to store the state of your system in some database or some repository. What you are going to do is you are going to store every single event that led to a certain state in your system. That means that the single source of true for your system are not what you have stored in a database, but 
the list of events that created that state. So in order to replicate an entity or to replicate the state of an aggregate or something in your system, you only need to go to the event store and get all the events that are related to that artifact or entity or aggregate and apply one by one each of them. So in this case, the end store will also provide some information on what may have happened that you may have lost if you just are just simply storing the last state in your system. Again, in this case, if you are using some kind of message broker, it's important to pay attention to any feature that the message broker may have to query for individual events or messages that are related to certain unique ID or transaction ID or entity ID or aggregate ID. And this is important because that will allow you to narrow your search a little bit uh, further. So in conclusion, um, whenever you face a new programming paradigm like event-driven uh, system, you need to understand that you are going to need to adapt your way of thinking. Or if you have something, some, some new uh, colleagues joining your team, just try to understand if they are already aware of how the paradigm works or try to give them room to adapt the way of thinking to the new paradigm. It usually takes some time, but also try to plan for debugging from the very beginning. Because the problem, the question is not when, it's not if, the question is when you are going to need to debug your system because that will happen. And try to think which is the information that you will love to have when you are going to debug and try to add that information from the very beginning when you are calling and deploying your system. Also take into account the operations theme because if there's a specific theme to lead the, the deployment or to monitor your systems, uh, add working together with them so that you make sure that your systems will be able to provide the information that you will need when you are debugging later on. And finally, consider event sourcing also for telemetry, because an event store is by itself a real great source to know what happened in certain cases. So the event stores, uh, if you have a, an event store, try to pay attention to that event store and how that event store will allow you to filter for events or to get all the information on the specific case that you are trying to debug. For example, to look all the events with a unique transaction ID or to filter events based on the payload that the message had or to get them ordered by time because that's the way yeah, that you will uh, have to, to apply or to follow the, the flow. Finally, that makes just one final advice is make your system observable from the very beginning because that way you won't need to step into a taxi to follow that message. It will be more like stepping into an helicopter and see how all the messages flow in your system from the very high distance. And once that you have identified one of them, you could descend and follow that uh, message from the air. That's basically my advice. Uh, thank you for attending. And I will be at the Axonic booth. So I will, if you have any questions, uh, I will be able, I will spend some time now here on the chat answering, um, but we can meet at the, at the booth uh, later on. Thank you very much.